Welcome to the big back of the net match preview. Bournemouth entertain the Foxes tonight, but can we outfox them? Leicester are visiting. It's the fifth round of the FA Cup and we are hoping that we avoid a cup set. Although would it be Leicester at the moment are flying high at the top of the championship. Leeds and a few other teams are breathing down their necks. We're going to go into it. But firstly, how rude of me. My name's Sam Davis. I'm Ben Phillips. Ben Phillips. Can I just congratulate you, sir? Firstly, love the hoodie. Oh, Secondly, TikTok. What are we doing? Milestone reached. 10,000 followers. Hit that last week. Absolutely buzzing. Thank you to everyone that follows because it does mean a lot. And only Iriola, he takes cup competitions seriously. Look, we know that he got to the semi-finals with two of his previous clubs in the Copa del Rey. Can he emulate that? With the cherries. Look, if we beat Leicester City, we are just 90 minutes away from Wembley. Have you got cup fever yet or would you have if we beat Leicester? Because I think I've been trying to temper my emotions, but I don't know. It just feels like if the draw is favourable, yeah. should we get through, we really could do something. I've just, I've got so many emotions going through because Wembley obviously is in the back of my mind with two, two wins away. Um, but then it would be so Bournemouth to win against Leicester and then draw Man City away, Liverpool away, something like that. So get all our hopes up for nothing because it looked like it was going that way in the Carabao Cup and then we go and draw Liverpool. So yeah, there's, there, there's many emotions. But then on the flip side, we could, we, we could beat Leicester and then draw Brighton or Wolves or something like that. Some more winnable teams. So yeah, you, you never know. Firstly, before we get, begin, I need to tell you about a very good app. And that app is SofaScore. Have, have you downloaded it yet? If not, what are you doing? It is our favourite footballing app. It's got real-time goal notifications. Notifications faster than when you're watching the TV, like Soccer, soccer Saturday. Player and team information, stats and heat maps. If you want to know who won the most ground jewels or headers, you will find that out on SofaScore. It's the highest rated live score app on the App Store and also the Google Play Store as well. Make sure you download it. Every single download helps the channel. Look at the card. There's a link there in the description as well. Or just tap in on your browser, afcbpodcast.com forward slash sofa score. It really helps to support the channel. So as usual, now's the time where we're going to tell you what to look forward to. We're, there's no fan cams, but there will be a fan reaction uploaded to this channel. And look, if you see us, we're in the North Stand. Say hello. It would always be good to get you on the vlog, maybe maybe at half time. Uh, and that vlog will be out the following day. And then from then... We're into our Burnley content. And uh, have you been to Turf Moor before, Ben? I never have. This is the only ground in the Premier League that I haven't been to. So it will make 20 out of 20, which will be quite nice. It certainly will. And hopefully our form picks up because, you know, we haven't had the results, but the performances, it's so weird. It's mm. like it's inversely proportional to our form at the moment, how we're feeling as fans. Because, yes, we've, we've won in the Cup, but in the league... Yet to get three points, a couple of draws along the way. But Manchester City, brief word about that performance. We lost 1-0, but it's probably the best ever loss that we've had in it because we, we were brilliant. Yeah, we, we played unreal. Second half, if you look at the XG, shots, possession or whatever you want to look at, we did dominate. I think yeah. off the top of my head, we had pretty much one whole expected goal in the second half and Man City had about 0.2. So wow. if, if if any of you statisticians understand XG, that shows that we did dominate and we were five times more likely to score than they were if you go by the stats. But yeah, it was it was fairly end-to-end -end, to be honest. We looked amazing on the counter-attack and we, we were playing some really good football. And Obviously, we haven't won in seven in, in the Premier League. But mm. if you if you look at the fixtures, Liverpool expected to lose. Yeah. That's fine. Spurs away, expected to lose. Yeah. That's fine. City at home, expected to lose. That's fine. Um, Newcastle away, we were probably expected to lose, mm. you know, on, on the face of it. And we got a draw. West Ham away, at the time, they were fifth or sixth. Mm. And we got a draw. Um, Forest a draw that's fine the only real slip up in there was Fulham away when we lost 3-1 mm. but again that, that happens it's football mm. so yeah we're really not doing that bad at the minute and we're, we're, we're really happy with where we're at 
Mm, yeah, and Leicester City, look, let's uh, take a look at them. Let's take a look at the championship table as well. Like we said, it's getting tighter up there. The gap between them and Leeds was, I think it was at 17 points at one stage, but now it's gone down to six. That 3-1 win for Leeds at Elland Road means that they are really closing it in. But look, it's not just them. Ipswich Town as well. They're on a Kiefer Moore-inspired run. Saints, three losses in the last four. What's going on there? Agent Brooks and Rothwell at work, maybe. Look, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'm sure their form will pick up. And either way, I think they'll probably be favourites for the playoff anyway. But yeah, I always wondered, Ben, whether the position in the league for Leicester and how many points they're clear of second Mm. would affect what kind of team they put out against Bournemouth. But they've even already tweeted that they should expect their fans to see a lot of changes. And there will be, rumoured up to about eight or nine changes. Yeah. So they've got good depth in the squad, especially in the attacking areas. You know, they've got Ian Acho, Daka, Vardy, Cannon, all to be able to play in that striker role. But yeah, they they, they will change a lot. And obviously, if they had beaten Leeds, then then they would have been on like 81 points. Leeds would have been back on like 69 or whatever. So there would have been a much more staggering difference. And they maybe would have been able to go for it a bit more. Mm. But now, you, you know in the championship, Leicester lose two more games, which is very possible in the championship. Yeah, yeah. And Leeds or Ipswich win two, then, then it's, it's bang. Last, last 10 games, you're all on level points. And yeah, so there's so much going on, uh, in the championship, but. This, it's fairly understandable to be honest because if we were in their position mm. I would want us to make changes if if we were fighting for relegation I would want us to make changes just because you don't want to risk key players get injuries and fatigue them even more mm. so uh, yeah it, I, I think it's fairly fa- fairly standard that they're going to make a few changes so but will we though because look um, we're in a, a pretty safe position in the Premier League but we know that he likes to go strong in cup competitions just look at that first 45 minutes against Swansea for an example about how we can blow teams away we was expecting a much weaker starting 11 to be fielded but it, he went with the big guns but in this one given they're making changes do you think that means we'll see a few as well I mean will we see the likes of like who now starting? Will will Phil Bill be straight back in? Sinister, etc. There's there's still a lot of questions to be asked, even with the cherries lineup, isn't there? Yeah, I want to see us make some changes because Ariola's presser he did say that the players are, are tired, which is expected because it was ninety minutes of end to end high tempo football against arguably the best side on the planet. So yeah, it, but because we've got such amazing depth. You know, Alex Scott didn't start, Favre didn't start, Sinistera, the list goes on. Yeah. If if we made five, six, seven changes, I would still be able to say this team could comfortably win a game in the Premier League because we've got that amazing depth, you know, on the wings. Mm. Sinistera ahead of Tavernier, that's fine. We could we could have Favre or Scott on the 10 over Cliver. We've got so many options and, yeah, yeah. Um, the changes. I, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure to be honest because in in the last round, mm. Solanke played, Zabani played. So to be honest, I reckon there'll be a couple, but not n- nothing too drastic. I saw their game. I've seen a few of their games live this season, and uh, Enzo Moresca, of course, we know that he was assistant manager to Pep at Manchester City, and he, he's trying to make sure they play in the right way. They do from the back. Sometimes it looks risky, but they've got players that, in the Championship level at least, look technically adept at carrying that off. Uh, I mean, Burnley did as well, and they and they mm. took the lead by storm. It hasn't quite worked for them this season in the Premier League, but I do get the feeling that. If Leicester were in the Premier League this season, I think they'd be doing better than Burnley um, because they've they've got a lot of talent Mm. in that squad. And yeah, some of the football that they've been playing has been absolutely sumptuous. But I think, Ben, that could could play into our hands a little bit because we prefer to play teams like that. And I've just got a Mm. feeling with the quality that we've got, we should be able to kill them off. 
Yeah, especially because they make changes. And if you look at their their centre backs, for example, Vestergaard and Connor Cody, yeah. they're not the quickest of defenders by by, by any stretch of your imagination. Um, he was at Saints when he Vestergaard. Yeah, and yeah. obviously Cody was previously at Wolves. Yeah. Um, so we we know they're good players, but if you were to get Solanke or Unal or anyone, to be honest, in a foot race against them, we would obviously fancy our chances. Um, but they've they've got some amazing players like Mavida D. Uh, I, I don't know how you say his name. Fatawu, he's a great player. Drewsbury Hall, um, yeah, they've they, they've got a very very good starting squad. Whether they they, they play obviously because of the league, I I don't know. But yeah, they've they've got a very talented squad with with, with some good players. So in their FA Cup runs so far, they were away at Millwall in the third round, winning 3-2, and then home against Birmingham City, comfortable winners 3-0. Very similar to us in terms of their games being high scoring. Of course, we had a we had a 3-2 as well in the third round against QPR. And then obviously we just swept the Swans aside in our last match at Dean Court. Home advantage is absolutely crucial. And partly Ben thinks that, and I said this in the second look the other day. Even if we do get Manchester City in the quarterfinals, the fact that we were so competitive against them in the last game makes me think that it doesn't matter. Like, just, let's just draw a team at home. Hopefully, we get someone not as good as them. Yeah. But um, I will start to feel really excited later on tonight if we get this win. I will really be. And when's the draw? It's got to be like it's got to be Thursday or something. Or yeah, I mean, it has to be. Um, if if you look at the teams that are left and how we've done against them, obviously excluding like Coventry and Maidstone this season. Mm. Drew against Villa, arguably should have won, taken four points off Newcastle, beaten Man United, beaten Forest, mm. drawn against Chelsea. You know, the, the list goes on. We've done very well against the teams that aren't Liverpool and City, which is why I fancy our chances against anyone really that isn't them too. And mm. e- even if we were to draw Liverpool at home with their current injury crisis, mm. could we? Yes. Um, but yeah, anyone that we do get, maybe unless we go to the Etihad, uh, there's no reason why I shouldn't fancy our chances because we've got so much confidence and it's the magic of the cup. Why it's not? the magic of the cup. Now, Cherries have never faced Leicester in the FA Cup before. In all competitions against Leicester City, though, let's take a look at the head to head. AFC Bournemouth have won eight, drawn five, and lost eight. And there's a there's a few games there, Ben, that that stick out for me. Of course, we played them not so long ago, last year. That was the 1-0 at their own yeah. place. That was uh, where James Madison, of all players, a terrible back pass or whatever he was trying to do. Phil Billing just got in there and uh, slide ruled it home. And then there was a 2-1 at home. I remember the 4-1 over COVID. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. So, well, that was when Solanke, like, first really got going. Yeah. yeah that, that was He's really arrived. Because we, we went into half-time 1-0 down and then second half. I don't even know what happened, yeah. but... Yeah, that that was. I think that was our first win from Project Restart, and yeah, obviously we still didn't stay up, but it felt like there was some more hope reignited there. But yeah, that that two one last season as well um, went one nil down and managed to obviously win two one with a. I think Ryan Christie scored late yeah. on. I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we we've had a fair few games against them that have been very 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 competitive. Hang on, did you say Ryan Christie scored a goal? Oh, mental. That never happens. What about Leicester City team news for tomorrow? On their injury list are Will Alves and also uh, Wilfred and Didi. Jamie Vardy missed the game at Leeds through an injury picked up in training. So we're not sure whether he's going to be in action tonight. For AFC Bournemouth, um, of course, Lloyd Kelly, this kind of hip flexor thing. Never mm-hmm. even heard of that part of the body myself. I've heard of the hip, but I don't know what it was. It's it some kind of joint. It allows uh, flexion to happen at the hip, which is obviously where the angle at a joint decreases. Sorry, I know I, I know that because of A-level PE. <laughs> Check me out. Gla- um, glad you remember. The only thing I took out from school was Oxbow Lakes, and that was geography. <laughs> and how to spell, maybe. And also do back of the net. But um, apart from that, I think, obviously, Phil Belling, we know his, he's back. It's the usual injury list, isn't it? Yeah. No, yeah. N- n- nothing nothing really new. Tyler Adams has been injured pretty much the whole season. Brian Fredericks does not exist. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that, that, That's about it. Whether, whether Billing will start, I don't know, because obviously he doesn't suit the system as well as other players, but never know. This season, uh, Dewsbury Hall, he's the lo- a joint leading scorer with 10 goals and he leads with 12 assists. Whether he's going to start, though, we're not too sure because mm. it looks like they are going to make 
a number of changes elsewhere with 10 goals. You've got Mavadidi and also Jamie Vardy as well. And they've also got, I mean, you, yeah, you, you mentioned him earlier as well, the midfielder, 19 year old Abdul Fatahu as well. He's uh, scored three goals with nine assists. And of course, someone that we were linked with as well in the last transfer window. And but for Kiefer Moore, changes his mind. Did he change his mind? We're not too sure. He stayed at Bournemouth and we didn't get Patson Dacker. Did you see his miss against Leeds, though? He had a couple of absolute sitters. Yeah. But he, he, stats-wise, he's actually doing really well this season for Leicester in terms of, like, games played and how many he scored and his, all of his, like, goals and assists returns and all of that. But, yeah, he is really, really poor in front of goal, if I'm honest, and that will be an amazing jinx for, for him to go on and start and score two against us. So... Um, but yeah, they've 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 got some amazing attacking talent like Drewsby Hall, unreal. Mm. I remember in uh, COVID, he scored uh, for Luton against us. Yes, he did. And, yeah, uh, when they beat us, when they were a fairly mid-table side. So yeah, man, you know your stuff. Okay, do you know who the ref is though? Uh, Paul Tierney. Paul Tierney. Yes, and you know what? We last had him at home against Wolves, where he sent Lewis Cook off. I mean, Lewis was a silly boy, probably shouldn't have, and it was probably the right decision. But yeah, that was the last time we had him. So we've not got a great record with him so far. Is Ben going to have a good record doing the teams? By the way, good luck with this, because also I gather you're going to try to do Leicester as well. I'm going to give it a go. I've got a few uh, players and players that I think can play for Leicester. Um, uh, should, should, should we start off with the Bournemouth team? Yeah, we'll start off with the Bournemouth team. Uh, let's go then, Ben. What are you going for? I suppose it's going to be the old, uh, the old classic 4-2-3-1, is it? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. Might as well. So, Travers in goal, I yeah. think he always plays in the cup. Yeah, and yeah, I agree with that. He, he looked good against Swansea, to be honest. Commanded his box yeah. well. Um, so, Travers in goal. I think the back four will stay the same in terms of Kerkes and stuff. I suppose there's not many options. I'm just trying to think what what could he do. Uh, the the only mm. thing that I'm thinking is if he was to play Watara at left back and maybe keep Kerkes a little bit fresh yeah, for the game at Burnley. But you're thinking he, he might be unchanged. Yeah, because it did so well against Man City. Yeah, you know, and it's, if ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's all yeah, and it's always good to have a bit of momentum. Let's face it. And look, these players that we've talked about that could come in that maybe won't for tonight's game, they can always hit the ground running against Burnley on Sunday anyway. So it's not it's not always necessary to give players a break. And look, on this occasion, I, I think you could be right. I think it could be unchanged. What about the the two in front of them? I I. I do think we'll drop Lewis Cook, not because he was necessarily bad against Man City, but you've always got to keep in the back of your mind with players like Tavernier and Lewis Cook, yeah. who don't have good injury records, that that it, they could get injured at any point. You know, that he's still quite unreliable in staying fit. Um, so I think we will play Alex Scott and Ryan Christie in, in, in that too. Because Wasn't he good, by the way, Ryan Christie? Yeah, he was real. And I, I actually thought that Alex Scott, uh, when he came on um, against Fulham, I thought he wasn't as effective. He was obviously a bit higher up. Mm. But I thought even the kind of brief cameo he had uh, the other day at home against City, I thought he was brilliant. He, he fizzed a nice ball over the top to put Semenyo in. I thought he linked up really well. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing him a little bit more. And then... What are you thinking wide options wise? Because we, you know, we got choices. To, you know, a lot of people we've we've mentioned uh, one of our wingers pay, maybe being off the boil. But what, yeah. what are you thinking? I do think Tavernier will be dropped. Um, I'm going to say that Sinistera is going to start because has he even featured? He did. I mean, he didn't come on against Fulham when we played no. him and. Did he come on against Man City? He even played a couple minutes if he did come on. Um, it would be his first start since signing permanently, I presume, would it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure it would be. Um, and obviously, Newcastle, he, he didn't, he, I don't think he played. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that, I, I think Tavernier will be dropped for Sinistera. And I think we will start Semenyo because he's doing so well at the moment. Okay, right, yeah. Okay, and then what about that sort of... Okay, Don will be up top, yeah? Yeah, that, that's a given. Then we've just got the hole in the tent to fill. And then the um, missing piece of the jigsaw, who's it going to be? Because you could, you could, there's a couple of options there. I, I could say Billing because he hasn't played in ages, but I think Cliver, again, is so crucial to the way we play and the way we press. I think he could work well in like a kind of hybrid three with Christian Scott behind him. Yeah. So I do think Cliver will start. And obviously, Favourite maybe could oh, yeah. because because I, I can't, nearly, nearly forgot we even had him. Um, 
But no, I've, Unal as well, because I mean, I, part of me thought could know. could could they maybe play two up, you know, two up, like play him in the number ten and mm. Dom just see how well he works together. He, he wants the minute. You sort of think if it, if he can't get a start against, Le- you know, no disrespect, but in a cup competition against Leicester, then when when will he start and how how does he assert himself on this team? Could, yeah. could but this be the time? We don't know. That's no disrespect also to the players that I didn't mention because if Unal started over Solanke, if Favour started over Cliver, if Watara started over Semenyo, I wouldn't be annoyed because we know that they're capable players. And as I've said about our depth, it's so strong that mm. we could we, we could play whoever out of that depth. And as long as they're in the right position, I, I, I don't really mind. Mm. Um, but that that's just what I think because we played so well and just lacked that finishing edge that I think, that I think Sinistera has over Tavernier against Man City, um, then that, that that could probably see us through by the 60th minute and then we could make some changes and that's that, that, that hopefully should be job done. Yeah, interesting. Okay, let us know in the comments below, by the way, what team you think will start, okay? We'd love to know your, what your thoughts are as well. We'll read them throughout the day as we build up to... Uh, kick off. Is it 7.30 tonight or is it 7.45? I think it, seven, is, it is 7.30, 7:30. With, the, with, with the earliest game. Live on iPlayer as well, by the way. BBC iPlayer. Oh. So you can catch it on there. Right. Um, good luck with this, Ben. But you're going to do Leicester now. I've yeah. not got a clue what you're going to go for. Um, go on. How are you going to do it? So I think the goalie is going to be uh, Stolagic. I really hope I didn't mess up the pronunciation of that. Um, left back Doyle I just think they'll rest James Justin because his injury record isn't great centre halves I'm going to say it's going to be Nelson and Vestergaard because Vestergaard's been suspended I think I think he'll come back and play I think at right back they'll play Hamza Chowdhury because Ricardo Pereira is so important for them that I think they'll rest him yeah. um, in the middle of the park I think they'll play Dennis Pratt as, uh, yeah. as one of them Dennis Pratt um, Atgen as well I, I, I can see playing with Mark Albrighton as well and then also I can see Harry Winks playing. So I, I, to make it more clear, midfield three of Harry Winks, Atgen and Dennis Pratt. Yeah. In uh, I don't know where exactly they play, but I think that'll be them. Mark Bryson out on the right side. Up top, I'm going to say Cannon because fr- from what I've seen, he's actually a pretty talented player. Mm. And then on the left, I'm going to I'm going to say this Marcel. I've seen he hasn't played a huge amount, so it could be a fringe player for them. So that is my predicted eleven. Whether that's right or not, I ain't got a clue. But if if I get maybe seven or eight out of eleven, I'll be very very happy. With that. <laughs> Super. Are you um are you looking forward to seeing Leicester back in the Premier League? Because let's face it, they, you know they, I know they're dropping off, but Touchwood. they are they are going to get promoted, aren't they? And it's a they should. It's a nice away day. Nice chance for us to hopefully pick up some points and yeah. uh, nice chance this season to get to Wembley. Will we get to Wembley? Look, um, score prediction time. Just scroll down, scroll down. You can still hear us, don't worry, scroll down. There you go. There's a little line there. Put in your score prediction. We want to know what you are going to go for. Ben, come to you. What are you fancying for tonight? I can see us running away with it tomorrow's early on. Similar to Swansea, I think that it's going to be a comfortable 3-0 win for the Cherries with Unal scoring. Unal scoring. And you know what? Oh, I don't know really. I was... Part of me hopes that we don't have a repeat of like, say, Stoke City, where the first half was appalling. Because we had that in in the Carabao Cup as well. Um, the first halves were just really bad, and then we made some changes, and then it all started to click. I I, I know I think and and only's got on playing at the moment, and there's a real positive momentum. I'm going to go for a two nil. Oh no, you know what? 3-1, 3-1. It's decided, 3-1. I think okay. they will score because they are potent, 3-1. There you yeah. go, that's what we're going for. Fair enough. I, I, I can see both of them happening. Right, so looking forward to um, seeing you at the game. Just remember, no fan cams, but we will have a reaction. And the Match Day vlog will be out tomorrow morning. Looking forward to it. Are you um, north standing? I am. Safe standing, north stand, season ticket seat. What do you what did you make of it the uh, last game safe time? Do you like it? I actually thought the atmosphere was was a lot better, a lot more consistent, yeah. let's say, um, with safe standing. And I'm just I'm very glad that most people, 98, 99% of people, actually followed it because I thought it would be typical Bournemouth for us to implement safe standing yeah. and then fans to maybe not 
not follow it, let's uh, let's say, but but we did. Fans have obviously uh, are on board with it, and there was there was a, a visible visible or an mm. audible difference. Yeah, but yeah, it was it, it was much better when when we got chanting. There was a lot more loud chant throughout the game. It just it felt a better part to be of because sometimes in the north stand even you were chanting before safe standing and it almost felt like you were on your own and wouldn't really be heard yeah. on the pitch. But now a lot more people are getting involved and the atmosphere will be a lot better. So just think think about what it would be like with safe standing with more people in the ground mm. when eventually we get a new stadium. It'll be uh, unreal. And it's going to be interesting because Leicester fans have got half of the Ted Mac. Uh, yeah. So they're going to provide a bit of atmosphere. But let's hope Leicester losses are like buses because they've had two in a row. Maybe this will be the third and Bournemouth would be on the way to Wembley pending a draw against Manchester City. But you never know. Um, ben, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been thoroughly enjoyable. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow the TikTok. On, and we'll man. see you at Dean Court. I'm the Chess. We're going to Wembley. Wembley. Come on. Wembley. <laughs>